Good afternoon to all of you as you're watching Countdown right here on Bloomberg Quint Live. Today is a fairly muted day's trade, at least for the benchmark indices. Nothing much has been happening. Very stock-specific moves that we need to be tracking in intraday trade. And we'll talk about all of those stocks in just a few moments, but let's run you through the headlines. Indian markets in consolidation mode, both benchmark indices trade with cuts. Nifty IT is the only sectoral gainer. Sun Pharma plunges to its lowest point in almost six years after reports of a whistleblower complaint to SEBI emerge. The complaint is in reference to the drug maker's relationship with Aditya Medisales. Reliance is one of the top gainers on the Nifty after the company reported a 16th straight quarter of profit growth in the month of December. Uh, and Wipro also gains ahead of its December quarter numbers today. The company is also expected to announce its decision on the bonus share issue in today's session. Good afternoon, Neeraj. Fairly muted on the indices. That's not much to talk about, but individual stocks is where all the action lies. You bet. And Frank, I mean, to be honest, this time around, it's the large cap space which is hogging the limelight in the session today. A couple of very important names to talk about during the course of countdown. We'll try and identify the trading positions that have happened during the course of the day in these stocks as well. Um, flat for the indices, so don't want to get into that. Let's jump straight to what the heat map is showing. And you will see Sun Pharma and Airtel being two top names that would be the focus of everybody's mind. So Sun Pharma is still down about 11% and the volumes have only jumped. We'll get to the volume pattern in just a bit as well. Bharti Airtel is the other one along with Vodafone Idea, of course, which is corrected quite strongly today. So down about 6%. Uh, for Bharti Airtel 2 in trade. Some weakness for Aisha Motors yet again. Some weakness for Larson and Dubro. Gives you the sense of the top four losers, I reckon, by way of contribution in trade. Infosys has a bit of a pullback too. IT is not quite setting the stage on fire in the session today. What is though? is Reliance Industries, 3.5% for the big boy uh, and the number is marginally higher than estimates. Brokerage is by and large positive, no surprise that it is doing what it is doing. Wipro, as Devina said on the headlines, ahead of the numbers, drop a couple of percentage points higher. Kotak Bank, ahead of the numbers on Monday, is trading a couple of percentage points higher, so not bad going. The likes of HCL Tech and Adani Port 2 trading okay in trade. So, mixed back for IT, Reliance in the green, but the two top talking points today, out of Two of the three top talking points on the large cap today are right here. Bharti Airtel and Sun Pharma in particular, about 11% lower in the session today. But well, if large caps have this, mind you, a bunch of small caps too reacting in just that same vein. Devina, what are you spotting? Well, you spoke about Sun Pharma can't leave Sun Pharma advanced research behind. So while Sun Pharma is down about 10, 11%, Spark is down 15% in trade today. So it's a gradual slope down, but continued selling pressure, pulling the stock 25 rupees lower at 146. Linde India, which has been a strong story up until now and has been gathering a lot of interest, is pulled back by 18% in today's session. A steep drop that you saw in mid-afternoon's trade down by 137 points. That's 18% given up. Sun TV is the other one. Remember, we had already spoken about this uh, stock and the kind of pressure that it has been on with regards to the uh, positions, in uh, the, the open interest positions. The stock's down about 7, 7.5% percent. Rallis India is down about five and a half percent. Vodafone Idea is down five and a half percent. You've got an Indian bank sign just reporting its numbers. You have an IIT Tech which reported numbers right now so watch out for that. Uh, l and Info is the other one. Uh, 376 crores in terms of the profit number that it just clocked in. It's a six percent dip from last time around. The stock is absolutely flat down about four tenths of a percent. Revenue is coming in at 2,473 odd crores. Um, that's one stock to keep an eye out for. Uh, Glenmark Farm that's down as well, 3.5%. Srinu is down 3%. You've got Syndicate Bank, uh, Dredging Corp, Deepak Fertilizers, 3% cuts across the board. So it is a day of losses uh, from the broader market space as well. So 1,000 stocks, 1,020 stocks declining versus just about 487 stocks which are trading in the green. That's Dhanlakshmi Bank for you. That too is trading under by about a percent and a half. Um, they've just reported their numbers too. Should uh, try and get the management on board to see uh, how those numbers have shaped up for them this quarter and what were the key disappointments if at all a smaller name uh, stocks at 18 odd rupees down about one and a half odd percent okay okay 
Moving on, Wipro may report a steady quarter with profits and margins rising to a low, on a low base. Analysts expect the tech giant to raise its guidance for the fourth quarter. Agam Vakil is here to sum up the expectations from Wipro. What we're looking at is, well, another steady quarter. Uh, we have to remember that it's a seasonally weak one for the entire industry, and Wipro could face some of those, uh, well, headwinds, should I say, as far as this particular quarter is concerned. But with respect to IT services revenues, we're looking at an uptick of around 1.4%. Uh, revenues in rupee terms are expected to rise around 4.1%, uh, and uh, EBIT margins standing at around 17% against 14.4%, uh, and Consequently, net profits could rise as much as 23%. Now, one may ask why we are looking at that considerable sequential growth in profitability. That is because of the company taking a, a, making a one-off settlement with one of its clients, National Grid, last quarter. But if you put that aside with respect to guidances, well, considering that 1.4% growth uh, for this particular quarter, it is slightly above what the company had guided for back in the second quarter of this financial financial year. With respect to the guidance for the fourth quarter coming, uh, we are working with numbers of around 1 to 3 percent uh, on a sequential basis. Coming down to your revenues growth, we are likely to see strength coming in from the Alight deal, which it has signed, and we are also likely to see that recovery in financial services to, be, uh, to, to continue. The third quarter did see a one-time impact settlement with National Grid, uh, which was to the tune of 514 crores, of course, uh, and Wipro has you know gone through a lot of these one-offs over the past two or three quarters uh, that uh, that eventually will move out of the base and uh, you know the base will normalize what we are watching for is sustainability in growth and cost rationalization demand in utilities and healthcare communications and cross currency impact on margins going forward on the whole it's going to be another uh, steady quarter for Wipro considering the seasonality in the industry all right, uh, let's take a look at some numbers then uh, that have come in. Tanlakshmi Bank reporting its uh, quarter three numbers. We are joined now uh, for more details uh, by uh, Ms. T. Latha. She's the MD and CEO of Tanlakshmi Bank. Latha, thanks very much for taking out the time. Uh, you want to quickly highlight for us how the quarter has been at Tanlakshmi Bank? Yeah, uh, thank you, Devina. See, the quarter for this bank has been really very good. Uh, we have reported a net profit of 16.9 crores. For the quarter ended December 2018, vis-a-vis -vis the net loss of 21.74 crores for the quarter ended December 17. Our net operating income has also improved from 26 crores to 37 crores year on year. Mm -hmm. My operating expenses have reduced by about 6% on year on year basis. My cost of funds have come down from 6.03% to 5.71%. My income on investments have increased by 8.09% year-on-year basis. My yield on investments have gone up. My provision coverage ratio has improved from 73.49% to 82.75%. Mm -hmm. My net NPA has come through to 2.93% from 4.08%. Mm -hmm. And overall, the CRR has also improved from 11.15% to 13.52% on year-on-year basis. There has been a slight improvement in our uh, CASA as well as in our retail deposits. We are very much in line with the RBI guidelines of priority sector and agriculture at 42% and 19%. Mm -hmm. And our book value is also improved to about 29.9 uh, as on date. Right. Uh, Ms. Lata, can you just uh, highlight for us again your uh, asset quality numbers? Uh, my asset quality, my gross NPA is around 8.1%. Okay. At uh, around 507 crores. And my net NPA is around 2.93%. And that has come off, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, can you just uh, talk to us a little bit more about, um, you know, what the advances have been like and have you seen an overall improvement? Did your pardon, ma'am? Advances. My advances are more or less stagnant, ma'am, because it's been a very conscious decision taken by the bank that we'll only go for improvement in our retail advances we are not going much for bulk advances. So there is a growth in our retail advances, and we are more concentrating on gold loans, microfinance, and MSME advances, where our percentage of recovery is very good. And uh, if you see that 
the this deposit which we had concentrated at higher rates have also been shed away by us so that is why we are now concentrating on smaller advances which are giving me an yield of around minimum 10.5 to 11% all right got that Thank you, uh, Ms. Lata. Appreciate you taking out the time and joining us uh, with your numbers for the quarter. That's the management at Thanlakshmi Bank highlighting how quarter three has been on uh, various parameters thereabouts. Stocks down 1.5%, 18 odd rupees on the counter. Taking a look at your top index gainer then, Reliance Industries. That's the one that's uh, trading at the high point of the day after the profits rose for the 16th straight quarter, beating analyst expectations of a decline. The telecom arm Reliance Geo clocked a strong subscription-led growth, even stronger than the markets were pricing in. Samit Sarkar, he's standing by with what worked for the oil and gas segment, as well as the retail segment, along with uh, some commentary with regards to uh, hiving off uh, some of the non-core assets in the tower and the fiber assets. Samit, over to you. So if you see Reliance Industries on a standalone basis, its net profit and Reliance Geo's net profit on a standalone basis did beat the street estimates in the third quarter of financial year 2019. And because of that, Reliance Industries consolidated net profit crossed the 10,000 crore quarterly mark for the very first time. Now, if you see in the second quarter, the company's net profit grew nearly 8% compared to last quarter to close to 10,251 crore rupees on the back of its retail segment, petrochemical segment, and because of Reliance Geo. Now, if you see the retail segment, the retail segment EBIT grew nearly three times to close to 1,500 crore rupees in the third quarter and its margin after a small blip in the last quarter again bounced back to close to 4.3 percent that is the highest ever EBIT margins reported by the Reliance retail segment in the third quarter of financial year 2019. Now if you see Geo, the strong subscriber additions have been aiding growth for Reliance Geo, and it did the same in the third quarter also but at the cost of its ARPU. Now if you see the company's average revenue per user that have declined for nearly fifth consecutive quarter and in the third quarter it declined to nearly 130 rupees per user per month. However, also in this quarter, if you see, the uh, pace of subscriber addition for Reliance Geo has been a bit slower compared to last quarter and that is because of discontinuations in the EKYC. Now if you see the petrochemical business which has been the cash cow for Reliance Industries and has been growing at uh, stronger due to higher volumes continue to do so in the third quarter. The EBIT from petrochemical segment was close to 8,200 crore rupees. However, it has grown at a slower rate compared to last quarters and that could be attributable to the contracting product spreads that we had seen in the third quarter of financial year 2019. Lastly, the gross refining margins of Reliance Industries. Now that did uh, not only be beat the street estimates but also its premium to the Singapore gross refining margin that is the Asian benchmark expanded in the third quarter of financial year 2019. So the uh, so Reliance GRM came in at around $8.8 per barrel while the street was estimating with a number of uh, close to $8.3 per barrel and its premium also expanded to $4.5 from $3.4 per barrel reported by the company in the last quarter. Lastly, if you see in the conference uh, in the analyst meet uh, they said that they are going to hive off their telecom, uh, non-core telecom assets, that is the tower business and the uh, fiber assets, to a different SPV where, where they can discount it. Few, they can discount this cash flows and sell the stake and use the uh, proceeds from this uh, to deleverage their company, which is a positive uh, thing that has come in from the analyst meet because rising debt for Alliance Industries was the only concern that the street was having, and now the company is addressing that by selling off the non-core assets and using the proceeds to uh, lower its debt. All right, that's Reliance Industries. Samit, thanks very much for that. And the stock is definitely uh, one of the key movers in trade today, which is probably the reason why the Nifty is just about flat, because you have seen more amount of losses coming in this time around. The broader markets have uh, a majority of sells versus buys in today's trade, and you can see that in the advanced decline ratio where the mid-cap index is down about half an odd percent. So probably staying buoyant on the back of uh, Reliance Industries and holding on to that 10,900 mark on the Nifty. Some more stocks that are buzzing, let's tell you all about them. Uh, we've got the Sharad Dubey who's joining in right now with the list of three stocks that are buzzing in trade today. Sharad. Afternoon, Devina. The first stock which is buzzing is your Sun TV, which is down by almost 8%, almost touching its 52-week low. This is based on the news that the put options have surged by around five times the average, and we have also seen a short covering with a high open interest of around 13.7 odd percent. The second stock is Linda India, which is down by almost 18%, its highest intraday fall seen in almost nine years as the company goes for delisting of its shares after the offer was made from the parent BOC group. The BOC group is also considering a price discovery method as a form of acquisition in which 
multiple brokerage reports have suggested that the open offer price will be around the 400 and rupees to 428 rupees apart from this the third stock i've picked up is rallis india which is down by almost 5% its lowest levels in almost 4 months after the tata group agrochemicals company reported a profits which are down by almost 45% this quarter this was mainly due to higher input cost imports from china which had compressed the margins by around 300 odd basis points apart from this management has stated in the press release that the export revenue has expanded due to better performance in europe and us and also the board has approved around 100 crore investment in expanding the key uh, capacity in its key products so these three stocks are buzzing today all right got that thank you so much sharad uh, those are some three buzzing stocks you need to keep an eye out on um it's looking it's looking pretty grim for a few of these stocks there and and the losses just seem to pile up uh, uh linde is now at 615 lost another percent from the last time we took a check spark 15% under 146 sun tv loses some more uh so about 7.5% on sun tv that's 523 on the counter uh, rallis on results is down 6% you've got a deepak fertilizers tv 18 is down 4% scient is down 3.5 to 4% results uh, coming out you've got uh, the likes of an alone of a transport also smaller stock 10 odd rupees but down about 5 or percent in the session well let's hear our janesh gopani of axis mutual fund explain why the slight the, the slightest of earnings disappointment may actually trigger a sell off in the indian equity markets see i think uh, uh, to be frank uh, valuations have been higher on the indian markets especially on the names uh, which are more domestic driven where growth opportunities are very high so slightest of the disappointment is uh, likely to trigger a bigger sell off and unfortunately even if you see the uh, liquidity in the market is very poor uh, if you really see the fii data or the domestic data net cash or net uh, buy uh, if you see it has been very very poor in terms of the liquidity side and hence i think the trigger is very very uh, high if uh, the results are a miss or if results are very good so i think this is what we are seeing uh, in the market uh, the depth of the market is not very good and hence the hence the uh, the shave off from of the prices is very very high if you were to play export oriented units you rather play through technology as opposed to pharma yeah i think uh, technology uh, at this juncture if you really see the commentary from uh, all all large tech companies i think it has been fairly positive as compared to what it was let's say one and a half two years back and and that is also you are seeing in the stock price movement how uh, technology has done well in in last uh, 12 months uh, so i think a uh, mode is good uh, incremental news flows are not negative but more positive obviously there is a risk of uh, uh some uh, expectation of us going into recession in by december 2019 but very hard to predict at this juncture uh, so that we have to be watchful but at this juncture the commentaries from the companies are much much better than what it was and uh, some of the companies are now looking at double digit constant currency growth which bodes well in the given circumstances Janesh, uh, you know, just come in on uh, what could drive re-rating in stocks going forward. I mean, uh, there was an interesting observation that was made that uh, year on, you're actually not going to re-rate stocks based on the kind of growth numbers that they show, but the stability of those growth numbers. If you have uh, stability in the quarter-on-quarter growth numbers, that's what's going to trigger a re-rating in the stock versus just sporadic growth numbers that come in. Maybe a quarter you'll see a great number, the next quarter. you'll see a dip so the volatility uh, over over uh, sorry the stability over the growth numbers yeah i think uh, for last two years especially after demonetization and gst coming into play uh, there has been uh, as you rightly said uh, uh, the disturbing trends uh, uh, and the trends have not been that great in terms of even companies coming out and saying that uh, for for uh, this year a whole we can grow at this percentage point so i think really uh, uh, there there has been distortion uh, normally we expect if a gdp growth rate is at 11 12% on a nominal side uh, you expect companies some of the sectors and the companies which are directly linked to that tend to grow at 
1.5x, 2x or 3x of GDP depending on the growth momentum of that sector. But at this juncture, that has been clearly broken. Uh, uh, there, are, uh, there are cases where uh, companies are growing much better than the expectation, but there are many cases which are where companies are not able to live up to their expectations on the growth. Uh, so I think... Uh, uh, so, so, so I think it is uh, too early to say. I think you are going into an election season as well, uh, which will have its own uh, event to pass through, uh, which will decide the economic situation uh, after that. Uh, uh, if all goes well, then I think the momentum will kick in and the expectation of growth rates will come back. But at this juncture, I think we have to be watchful, careful and just ensure that uh, this uh, the numbers where uh, where companies are delivering are good numbers and and not are not missing the estimates all right, turning focus to Sun Pharma now. It's the top loser on the Nifty today after falling 6% yesterday. It's another 11% given up. Um, it's the access given to select individuals by Money Life to view a whistleblower complaint, and that's what's causing this. It's been attributed for the sharp fall of the stock in today's session. That's the main reason that we're seeing it fall. In fact, uh, let's talk about this in a bit more detail and bring in Devashish Basu, the founder and editor of Money Life, who is joining in right now uh, to talk a little bit more about what is there in that 172-page document. Devashish, thanks very much for taking out the time. And let's start off with the first question with regards to what exactly are the contentious issues that you can discuss with us that you have access to in that 172 page document see first of all there's a lot of allegations in those uh, documents and <clears throat> many of those facts need to be corroborated independently I haven't checked them I don't have the resources to check all the facts so those facts that I have not checked, I'm not going to talk about it because that's, that's not fair, that's irresponsible. From what I've seen, I see that there are, there are very, very serious issues of governance in Sun Pharma and uh, what the institutional investors should really focus on. And you mentioned in your opening remarks that I've, got, I, I've given select access. I want to correct you. Access is not select. It is meant for institutional investors, yes, but it's meant for all institutional investors. Why institutional investors? Because they, have, they alone have a fiduciary responsibility. We are media, we are reporting, we do not have any legal responsibility other than the defamatory issue. Analysts do not have a fiduciary responsibility to the public or to the investors. It is the mutual fund specifically that I have in mind who have retail investors' money and who have to invest that money responsibly, they should know. And it is in public interest that I have decided to give access to all institutional investors, if at all they are interested in seeing this. So having said that, let me uh, reiterate what I said, which is that there are many facts. Facts have to be ascertained. It is the job. It is the primary job of SEBI to pay attention to whistleblower. Earlier, they did nothing about an earlier very major whistleblower issue which was the National Stock Exchange Algo scam, which also Money Life broke. And as you remember, it went on to the court and we, 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 won, on, uh, we won against NSC. So if SEBI, which is a regulatory authority, tasked with the job of an orderly and fair and transparent securities market, if they investigate, then we will get to know more what is the truth and what is not the truth. Okay, Dibashish, hi, uh, Darshan here. Uh, just, just wanted some bit of clarity here. Uh, you said that you have access to both uh, the documents that are there, the first whistleblower complaint and the second one. Uh, for the sake of clarity and to give the benefit of doubt to Sun Pharma or, or you know, the or you know, uh, to the whistleblower also, uh, are, are you, uh, how, how sure are you of the credibility of uh, this whistleblower? Is it something that the whistleblower gave you the document or is it something that you have acquired from SEBI? So, I I'm, all I'm asking is, do you personally, uh, as Money Life, know this whistleblower? I'm not at a liberty to disclose anything about that. It is it, under the whistleblowers, uh, un, under the whistleblowers' rule. I mean, uh, norms and an act which is in, pending in Parliament. This whistleblower has to be protected under any circumstances by anybody. It, if you want, you can cast any aspersions on the whistleblower or on me, 
that is entirely up to you but i am not a party to that no no there is no casting any aspersions here it is just that uh, you know for the sake of benefit uh, we are not saying whether the whistle blower is right or no we just we are not asking you to disclose the whistle blower no no you are not you are not the judge no no See, point is no I, that's not the point you are not the judge there is no question of you or i giving anybody benefit of doubt i have asked sun pharma questions before i wrote they have replied their answers are there on the cop on the on the first two articles third article they have not replied if they reply i'll add the articles i have done my job as a media which is asking questions to the other side no no it's fine i'm not it, in the business of giving see, anybody no, benefit of doubt Debashi, either no, sun no. pharma or missile blower or anybody that's no, no, a wrong no. question no no it's not a wrong see we are not asking you or putting any allegations it's a simple question that we are asking have you met this person or no we don't, we don't want any kind of information we just wanted to know whether have that's you that's not relevant right why is it not relevant no no that is that is that is that is completely well, it's not relevant to me i am supposed to answer right yeah you are supposed to answer because see the point here is that you know a lot of people write stuff uh, we'll get to to the issue here but, but we just wanted to be this to be clear listen i have spent my first art, i have written my i have written my first article 35 years ago okay lot of people write don't tell me about what lot of people do that's not lot of we are not lot of people No, no, we Debashish. have a track record we have our own credibility yeah. if Debashish. you do not know about that do not call me no no debashish as simple as that debashish completely agree uh, i didn't want to get this in a wrong footing the only question only reason why we are trying yes. to figure out was whether or not uh, this person is uh, an anonymous whistle blower or somebody that you know that was the only reason of asking this question to you uh, no issues if you do not feel like answering that uh, let's give, let's move on to the issues at hand before i just get to some of the investigations that you would have found out uh is it possible to get a sense of what's the quantum of or what's the number of uh, institutional investors who would have uh, come and visited uh, because the trading pattern seems to suggest that there would have been some institutional shareholders who would have dumped the stock over the last two days after uh, meeting you or after accessing the documents that you had i i have no idea uh, what the institutional shareholders would have done in the stock market i am not watching the prices of sun pharma that's not of my interest at all and i have uh, i think my my reckoning is that about 8 to 10 people have come and i think it includes some uh, some analysts as well in the first they just came in and can we can we see and i thought we gave access to a few analysts farm analysts or something like that as well but i was not there in the office at that time right uh, devish is um, you know while you've gone through the entire report and like you said you've not done uh, fact checks for most of them so you're not being able to reveal most of them but from what you have read and what you can reveal what was the biggest concern that you came across in that document well there are two points that i'd like to make in this one is of course the fact that these two documents are now with sebi let me repeat it is not your job it not my job it is the job of sebi to find out what is going on in sun pharma and if there is any truth to it open up an investigation after preliminarily looking at it and open up an investigation and ask questions today sebi has a lot of power and in fact a lot of powers acquired in 2013 which includes uh, questioning and so on and so forth i won't go into the other gori uh, strong powers that <laughs> sebi has acquired but they have enough of powers today to look at whatever they feel like whatever they want to the almost police like pass they have right. point number 2 is that there are huge governance issues in sun pharma which is shocked and surprised me and i thought that this is uh, you know there's always a surprise in the financial market every few years you know satyam was a surprise so uh, i thought that there is it is in public interest for people to know to what is going on there and i one of the, one of the things that i found really egregious which is that the money from the public share, publicly held sun pharma is going into aditya medicals which is a family which is a promoter owned company of the of sun pharma group which is now a global giant but here is this indian distributor where so much of money is flowing in and from there onward to various other promoter companies and related companies i mean now you want to get technical and say this is a related party this is not a related party that's now actually in the financial market it operates 
if you see Sudhir Walia has created an, another huge group for himself which includes Fortune Financial, ITI and so on and so forth, Suraksha Reality, his huge real estate investments and so on and so forth. That is, that is large, that is very, very large, you know, may not be as large as Sun Pharma, but it's, it's significantly large and he is a brother-in-law of Dilip Sangvi. So money has gone into these companies from where they have gone. Well, some have gone into investments, some have gone into purchasing distressed assets, some, and a lot of money has come back to show there are very, very low balances. But there are other things also in the, in the, in the, in the second uh, report, which I'm probably going to write about. But mm -hmm. essentially, the core of it is corporate governance issue. Mm -hmm. uh Devashish, you know, our uh, uh, own uh, analysis that we had uh, compiled some time ago uh, spoke about various uh, promoter entities which held shares in Aditya Medisales, which then again go back to the Sangvi family holding. And most of these companies then again have various other companies that have interest in them, which created a very convoluted web of shareholding pattern, which is the reason why uh, up until now, there wasn't a necessity for uh, uh, you know, Sun Pharma to mention Aditya Medisales as a related entity. Is that something that you found in your findings in that, in, in that report at all? Is, is something indicative of that as well? Well, that's what Sun Pharma has said. And if you see the transcript of their, of their conference call with mm -hmm. the investors, it is extremely tentative. It, there is no decisive points being made by the management. They are constantly saying, well, if you don't like, we are going to reverse. I haven't come across a situation where a company with you know such huge, giant company, global company, mark, such huge market cap, such strategically, such fantastic execution over the past 20 years, would come and would tell institutional investors, well, if you don't like, we are not going to do this. Well, that shows enormous amount of wrongdoing, according to me, which is being covered up. Now, you want to get, tech, as I said, you want to get technical to say that, you know, it, can, it, can, it cannot be related party, but who's gone and checked? Have you seen the shareholding, actually? Have you been able to decipher whether, uh, what exactly was, has been the shareholding pattern over the years? It is what they have said. That is that too last year when the whole thing has started going, blowing up. Hmm. Anything interesting apart so from? I think there is an issue of trust here, and financial market has to decide. No, no, go ahead. And financial market will have to decide uh, how how much they would like to trust what the Sun Pharma man, uh, management comes up and tells them. I mean, it's it's their call. I am not an investor, so okay. it's not my call. Devashish, anything apart from uh, the ones that uh, you've highlighted, the other thing, Medisales, uh, Suraksha Realty angle, anything else that you found interesting or uh, in, in the whistleblower complaint? I found a lot of things, a lot of things uh, interesting, which, uh, which pertains to the uh, real estate area and which pertains to distressed assets area. Uh, buying stakes in companies which are uh, near to default or in default and uh, but that is a very very murky area and it 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 does not directly involve the balance sheet of sun pharma so if you are interested in what happens to the listed company well there is no direct involvement but i think it's one huge group they work in tandem and if i were an investor I wouldn't like at all what I see over there. And there are, you know, I mean, I just find it very, very reprehensible for what I read, but I can't share that. Uh, the other thing is, you know, once the conference call was held with Dilip Sangvi, he clarified a lot of things, but a uh, couple of things he didn't clarify that he didn't disclose where uh, the uh, the unrelated money went in the, the close to 2000 crore. Uh, does the whistleblower case, uh, whistleblower documents talk anything about in that regard? No, not, not that particular thing, but he, he talks about much larger numbers in other directions and that too from uh, essentially from uh, Aditya Medisales, which I mentioned. Right. Debashish Shah. Not, not, not from Sun Pharma balance sheet. Right. To clarify. Uh, 
does it mention any other uh, company names? Uh, you know, obviously, while you said that you've not done your fact checks and you're not at liberty to, you know, put out what's there in entirety in that report, but even if it's data points that you've managed to read and understand yourself, which probably can be put out in public domain. I mean, fact checking, obviously, you leave it to SEBI, they, they'll do their job. But for a shareholder to get that information, I mean, if you can put it out for them, I mean, while institutional investors have the access to the entire report, a regular retail shareholder doesn't. So it could be a trap for them. They're not the ones that are selling and bringing the stock down 10% today. It's the institutional investors. And while you argue that it's the mutual funds who have, uh, you know, the general public's money, there are also retail investors who've not got an opportunity to exit the stock and could do with some more information, if you could put that out. I'll think about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, anything you can uh, maybe mention right now, Debashish? Anything at all? No, I'm I'm fine. I've told you what I really. Okay, asked. I just have one. I just have one follow-up. If you can uh, reveal, uh, institutional investors that we met spoke about the trail of email sure. exchanges, which uh, also seemed uh, to be a bit spooky to them. Uh, any any comments on that? Anything that you've seen which sounded uh, slightly off uh, from what is normal? Well, it is, it it's, it it is extraordinary. Uh, I mean that is that really to me was I mean frankly I have the, the 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 whistleblower documents are so explosive, but um, I was just not willing to believe large parts of that. Uh, it's it, it just may well be true. This that's a feeling I have now. Uh, Devashi, just a final question from my end. Uh, I've read the articles that you wrote on uh, Money Life. Uh, uh, are you getting a sense that the whistleblower documents are, are more on, on, on the promoter side of the company rather than the core working of Sun Pharma? It's got nothing to do with working of Sun Pharma. Okay. I mean, according to me, as I said here, the issue is of governance. It's not about products, plants, acquisition, FDA clearance, nothing. All of that is just not relevant here. Right. All right, Debashish, we're running out of time, but uh, I would have really wished for you to uh, just give us something more, at least, uh, you know, in the benefit of the shareholders. But uh, nonetheless, I uh, hope you put out another one, another article, and, and, and make sure that all of us get to read it the next time. Thank you so very much uh, for joining and appreciate your time. All right, we're going to take a very short break on that note. Thanks very much uh, for joining in on this leg. We're going to come back and talk more markets with our experts on the other side. Delegates of over one.